Removing overlap stitches is something that a lot of people um, are kind of aware of and they want to do in their software, but they often experience issues with it. And so in this video, I'm going to try to explain when you should and shouldn't use remove overlaps and what things can happen uh, depending on the type of design you're using. So you can see I have two designs here. I have just a simple like square with a circle in the middle. Then I also have this one that has a um, just a fill pattern with um, satin stitches on top of it. Now when you're trying to make the decision on if you should remove overlaps, um, you want to pay attention to the size of the object. So if I select um, the purple part of this design, I move it out of the way, you'll see that there are stitches underneath. So um, it definitely is stacking the stitches, a fill stitch on top of a fill, and that's what can make something really kind of hard or bulletproof. And so if you remove the overlaps, it can help soften it up. Now this design over here, you have the white on top of the purple. These are pretty thin objects here, and there's a lot of them that if I remove the overlaps and you know just remove all the stitching, the purple stitching underneath of this white, um, if I select it, move it out of the way, you'll see that there are stitches underneath. Just wanted to show that. If I remove the overlaps, what you'll find is that it's going to really affect this fill stitch and it's going to make it hard for it to create that fill stitch. There'll be a lot of running around going from object to object because it's got to try to map out the best way to fill that object and leave the holes there and there's just not enough width there to really make a difference so you really want to pay attention to the size of the object now typically for me I want that size of the object to be at least about a half an inch before I start removing it um, so if it's not at least a half an inch in size I'm probably not going to remove the stitches underneath. I'm probably just going to put stitches on top of each other because it'll just make it easier and cleaner and I'm not too worried about it if it's not a big object. What I'm more worried about is removing stitches from small areas that really affect the design or the stitches that stitch before it and affect the outcome. So if we take a look here um, and I take this object right here and to remove the stitches you just select one of the objects the object that's on top that you want to remove the stitches that are underneath of it so that's an important thing you don't select both objects you select the one that's on top that you want to remove the stitches underneath of so with it selected I can do it from the sequence view or I can select it just with the selection tool. I just right mouse click and I choose to remove overlapped stitches. When I click that, it's going to bring up the remove overlapped stitches little dialog window here. And by default, it gives you about a 0.5 millimeters. So that's what that's going to do is give you um, some overlapping so that you don't get a gap. Now, personally, if I have a fill on top of a fill, I'm not going to do just 0.5 because you still could have a tendency to see gapping. I would jump that up to one millimeter, a fill on top of a fill. And I'll hit OK and we'll take a look at this. So I'm going to zoom in here, zoom out just a little bit here, and I'm going to take this and I'm going to move it off to the side. And what you'll notice is that those stitches are now removed from the fill stitch. So let me go ahead and come back here. I'm going to turn off 3D view and I'm going to zoom in here. And you can see that there is some overlapping. This is the, the purple part. It's selected so you're seeing it in blue. And then you can see the white stitches underneath. And you can see that there is an overlap here. So this one ends here and the white ends right over here. I'm in inches here. Let me go to metric. If I click and drag from here to here, you're going to see that it's going to be right at like that one millimeter 
range. So this is exactly what we want. We're not going to get any gapping there. So the, the really nice thing about this tool is that it does have that feature where it will put in some overlapping. Now, the other thing to keep in mind with this is that once you punch something through, it does modify the fill stitch or the objects underneath of it. So if I go back here and I get it back to where the stitches are underneath, just to kind of show you, I'll take this fill stitch. I'm going to make sure it starts on one end and ends on the other. Okay, and I'll do the same thing with the purple. I'm just changing the start and end points um, just so that they go in a, a motion that is continuous here. I'll right click. And now let me select um, the bottom one, right click and choose remove. Wait, I want to show you this, the how it stitches. So when it gets over here, you'll see that the underlay is going and then it's going continuously from top to bottom and the other one's going to go from bottom to top here. So now if I select it and I right click and I choose um, remove overlap stitches and let me put this at one again and hit OK. Now it's going to have removed the overlap stitches. So if I pull that away, you can see that. But now let's take a look at how it stitches that fill stitch underneath. So you can see that the, it's creating that hole but there's a lot of moving from one side to the other and then back. Even on here, watch when it gets down to right about here, it's now gonna go travel down and then back around and up. It just makes it um, not a continuous one, but that's something you have to do when you're removing you know, overlaps here or removing stitches underneath. It's gonna force it to stitch differently. And I just wanted to point that out because if you had too many of those things, it would just be running and going all over the place and it would not um, it would not be good to remove the stitches underneath because that fill stitch would be really complicated. So just to take a look here too, I've removed the overlaps. You can see that there's um, 16,500 16, stitches in the design. If I go to undo and I get it back to the point where there were the stitches underneath, you can see that I'm at 17,000. So I went from 16,500 with it removed. Without it removed, there's 17,146. Just to kind of point that out, that it did affect the stitch count. And so you can see that using this tool is pretty easy. Now, let's get into the, the part where I'm going to undo this where people get in trouble. And this is, um, I'm just gonna duplicate this. Basically, the majority of the time that, that people struggle with this tool is when they bring in a design that is not a WAF file or a file that was created in the software that still has, like if I click and I drag this, you can see the outline there. It's very clean, it's just showing the outline. When we save it into a different format and open it back up, all of that is lost. So the way that I can replicate that and show you without saving it is just I can right click on both of these after they're selected and choose to prever preserve as stitches. So you can see that now it just says stitches. And if I click and drag, you can see that all it does is show me all the stitches in the object here. Same thing for the purple because I had it selected. Um, I've lost my outlines there. So um, now I can select them and I can right click and I can choose to convert to outlines. This would be basically the same thing as saving it as a PES file, opening that PES file into the, the Floriani software and having it convert to outlines. It's the same concept here. So now this fill stitch, if I click and drag it, you can see that there are some outlines there. You don't see as many of just the lines themselves. And if you look over here in the sequence view, you can see that there's a run stitch, a run. It, that was the underlay, a fill, and there's even a um, what we call stitches, and that's probably just a lock stitch there. And same thing with this uh, purple fill here. Now you have a run stitch, so it's not it's no longer clean as this one. This one right here, you select it, you take a look at that 
and it's just a fill stitch, right? So I've taken it out of outline mode. I've um, then I've opened it in the software again, and I right clicked and converted to outlines, and that's basically the same thing. So this is now a design that's kind of like a PES design that I open in the software, and this is where people get in trouble because they want to remove the overlaps of a design that they didn't create in the software so it doesn't have those clean outlines. But I can select the purple, I can right click, and I can choose to remove overlapped stitches. And I can again put that at one and hit OK. And what we're going to do is we're going to find that if I select this purple again and move it out of the way, that um, it did a pretty clean job and it doesn't always do that. Sometimes we get some lines that run across here and that's something that is actually pretty common here that we get some lines that run through. So let me go ahead and hit undo a couple times here and let me um, come back here and let me take this, um, let me just select this and delete it. Let me take this and I will put my start and my end points. They were kind of kind of like this. Um, they were a little bit different. And even on this one, let's just say we started it here and ended it here. And let's just see what happens if we take this now and we duplicate it. Come down here, right click, preserve as, as stitches. We'll select them both again, right click and convert to outlines. And now let's take that purple piece, right click and remove the overlapped stitches. Let's uh, try to grab the purple and let's move it out of the way here. And you can see right there, it totally changed the outcome here. You can see these lines here. That's the difference of, of working with a file you create in the Floriani software and one that you brought into the software that wasn't um, created in it and you try to use a feature like this. And this happens because it doesn't have the original outlines. It's trying to recreate them and there's just things that can go wrong in those situations. So you can see that I got it to do it okay one time. I just changed start and end points on the objects and tried it again and it didn't work. So there's really no telling if something is going to truly work for you or not when you're working with a file that was created or came from a different software or that was in a format that um, wasn't WAF. And that's just something you need to keep in mind. And is there a workaround for it? Not really. Um, there's not really a workaround to try to get this to to work right. You can try a bunch of different things, but um, chances are that you would have to just recreate this fill stitch possibly and, um, and take out the hole. And a lot of times that's way faster than trying to edit it. So I just wanted to point that out because I think it's important that you understand that there are limitations to a tool like remove overlap stitches when you're working with a design that came from somewhere else, a different software program, or was in a different format where the software had to recreate outlines. And it's just important to understand that. Now, let's just uh, take a look at this one. Um, this could possibly cause the system to crash. So what I'm gonna say with this is, we've kind of gone through everything. I've showed you the ins and outs of that tool. I'm gonna to try to remove the overlaps here. Now, like I said, this could crash the system. If it does, this video will be over. Um, just know that something like this is can definitely happen. Um, and that's another thing. When you're working with a complex shape like this and you try to remove outlines, it doesn't always work. So um, we'll just uh, go from there. So I'm gonna right click and remove overlap stitches and I'll choose okay. And let's take a look to see if it did anything. We'll click around and you can see it didn't even touch it. Part of the reason for that is that this is, um, 
when I think about it here, this is steel stitches. So it's kind of like a, a run stitch or a single line um, object. Now, if I recreated this as satin stitches, um, which would take a long time, um, it would it would possibly work. But you can see that even then though, steel stitches isn't going to punch it through. So just something to keep in mind if I took um, a bunch of these circles, resized them a little bit, and just made a bunch of duplicates. So you can see I'm just making a bunch of duplicates here. I'll change the color here in a second. This is just to kind of show you of you know, kind of what can happen when you try to remove a bunch of um, objects or overlaps for, you know, objects that aren't all that big. This is, let me go into inches here. This is about, it's about half an inch. So this would be a case when you would probably punch it through because it is pretty large in size. Um, I could make this smaller and I would maybe not do that, but let's select here. Let's change this to white. So now if I come in here and I select these purple pieces here, I right click and I choose remove overlapped stitches and hit OK. Let's just take a look here. If I let me ungroup this, you can see that it already did remove those holes, but let me just show you did it here but now let's watch how it stitches out on this white part you can just see look at that how it goes all over the place this is just something that happens there's nothing wrong with it every software program would do this um, it just really kind of cuts it up it's just something to keep in mind as you get going but when it's something about a half an inch you definitely would want to punch it through if I take this and I make this smaller and those circle areas become um, like a 0.36 inches, I might not do it at that point. I don't, I would just kind of have to check it out, but um, just something to keep in mind. So that's how you use the remove overlaps. It's really easy. You just select the object or objects, like the multiple circles, right click and choose remove overlap stitches. And um, so hopefully this kind of helped explain how that tool works and what the limitations are and things that you might need to consider when using it. And uh, we'll see you in the next video.